scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Lord was in this place and I knew not. The result of that carelessness and negligence was 20 years of pain in the house of Laban. By the time we get to Genesis 32, God comes to him again. This time from his pain he had learned. The Bible says he dismissed his wives, his cattle when he was alone. Then a man came and he held on to him. He said, leave me for the day breaketh. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. He blessed him. He touched the whole of his thigh. And the Bible says the sun arose and he called that place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. May tonight be someone's night of encounter. In the name of Jesus. The path to spiritual progress. The path to spiritual progress. I want to charge our hearts tonight. The path to spiritual progress. The Bible declares that the path of the just, one who is in Christ, should be as the shining light that shines brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day. Hallelujah. And everybody desires to make progress, to advance, to flourish, like God has spoken to you through his servant. But then your spiritual progress in order of priority is the most important factor that governs every other aspect of progress. Now, it is possible to excel in some areas, neglecting your spiritual life. We have seen people become wealthy, millionaires and billionaires and they have no respect and no regard for spiritual things but it is impossible to thrive and to become holistically advanced ignoring your spiritual life the control room please listen for the believers progress is the health and the strength of your spiritual life hallelujah and in the days that come upon us now we cannot afford to be careless as far as our spiritual lives are concerned. Now, I know that there are other aspects we need to grow and thrive in financially, in our homes, family life, health, and so on and so forth. But hear me again that in order of priority, if your spiritual life goes down, it is only a matter of time. Every other aspect of your life will begin to answer. Is that true? You do not destroy a tree by plucking the leaves one by one. All you need to do is to disconnect it from the root and to leave it lying there. And the leaves that still look green as at the point of disconnection will eventually become dry. But you remove all of the leaves as laborious as that is. You only wasted your time if you left that tree connected to the root because it will come out with a level of, of, of glory again that superseded what you were trying to cut down. Many believers have not learned the excellency of making spiritual progress. And I think we live in a world that has downplayed spiritual things. We largely perceive spiritual things to be a nuisance and an interruption 
to civilization or our sense of general progress so it's as though we have been left with an option to become spiritual and then mediocre in every aspect of life or to just nicely reject God or downplay him then excel in any other area the Bible teaches us we read from Genesis to Revelation how that men ignored God and they seem to have a semblance of success but overnight for many of them overnight hallelujah things went down and they got back to ashes they got back to nothing and the bible also tells us people who seem to have paid attention investing in their spiritual lives and for a long time they look like failures based on the indices that we use to measure success and as though overnight men like joseph you would call joseph a failure imagine if you met joseph the night to his lifting he would still look like a failure except that the track record of his strength and health with God will not I preached a message at the mainland yesterday and you do well to get the teachings and listen to it the Bible says that God cannot be mocked Galatians 6 9 says do not be deceived God cannot be mocked whatsoever a man soweth and I taught them in the mainland that whatsoever is a seed there are soils that can receive whatsoever. Hallelujah. The Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. So I want to charge your heart. Um, let me tell you the truth. My, my, the, the major index for my according honor to people in order of priority, I'm someone who is very vocal about honor, but I do not have so much honor for people who downplay the realm of the spirit and downplay the role that your spiritual stature has to play as far as your overall progress is concerned. And we need to be careful because the pride that is upon mankind is about to be tamed by the realities that will happen in the world right now. There are many people like Nebuchadnezzar and like all the kings in Babylon who believe that because of the abundance of what they had that they could do without God in a moment they were all brought to their knees that's the reason why we raise that song that our eyes are fixed on him that we're looking unto him the Bible says trust in the Lord with all your heart Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 it says and lean not on your own understanding then it says in all your ways acknowledge to acknowledge means to be able to place priority on acknowledge him and he shall direct your path the next verse says be not wise in your own understanding it says fear the Lord and turn away from evil hallelujah show me someone who looks like a failure all I want to check first is his spiritual state if that man is still making robust spiritual investments then you better change your statement fast because you will have to say sorry in the future but show me a man who has ignored God and is having a semblance of success I show you a risk about this is a self-destructive risk it is only a fool that will say in his heart there is no God the Bible says in him we live is that in your Bible in him we breathe and in him we have our being society seems to not place so much value on you when you become vocal about the things of God because they just brand you as being I'm not talking about blind fanatism there is there is a wrong approach to the Christian faith that is just blind fanatism with no results that makes you a nuisance to yourself and to everybody around you this is not what I'm advocating I'm advocating a level of passion that is palpable with results that show are we together now it's important we understand what I'm advocating tonight there are people who out of their zeal without knowledge blindly advocating spiritual things have become a nuisance to the body of Christ to themselves because they have captured a context of Christianity that does not represent the Christ properly I'm talking about a depth of relationship with God that 
causes his honor to be smeared upon you and a generation can attest to the fact that through your life it is profitable to love God we look to Yahweh Yahweh my hope is Yahweh Yahweh I look to Yahweh Yahweh forever Yahweh blessed be the name of the Lord Galatians chapter 4 let's start from verse 1 the Bible says if we can have KJV or the new no no problem now I say unto you KJV says that an heir for as long as he is a child that is a condition there an heir meaning a bona fide beneficiary of an inheritance but there is a condition that that person must get out of to be able to walk in the fullness of that status of being an heir it says an heir for as long as he's a child differ it not from a slave that means the experience of that one if you put that person side by side to a slave you would not know who was the heir and who was the slave in other words their experiences will be the same negatively speaking an heir for as long as he's a child there should be an honor and a garment of glory that is upon an heir is that true but it says for as long as he's a child so the problem is that state of childishness and Paul helped us to understand his concept of childishness in 1st Corinthians chapter 13 he says when I was a child I thought like a child I spoke like a child I understood like a child so these are the dimensions that capture childishness he says now that I have become a man I have laid these childish things away when I was a child, I understood, I thought, I spoke as a child. But now that I have become a man, I must lay aside childish speaking, childish understanding. Is that true? And childish thoughts. The path to spiritual progress. God desires that we excel spiritually and that from the foundation of our spiritual progress very beautiful description that pastor mildred was given that from the root it goes down and then it begins to spread that's right so if your spiritual life is robust and alive it then becomes that every other aspect of your life begins to respond it may not happen immediately i love what the pastor shared when i came in i heard him say something that was powerful that you bear fruit with patience hallelujah i want to share with us a few keys that can help any believer this is a roadmap and a spiritual pathway that God is giving us tonight that if we follow we will eventually emerge people of stature and people of maturity in the spirit and let me tell you the truth the days that are upon us will demand that your stability depends literally on the extent of the spiritual stamina that you have there are many who will fall by the wayside not because of insincerity not even because of lack of godliness but the bible says but the people that do know their god they shall be strong capacity and they shall do exploits not the people who assume there is god not the people who hear that there is god not the people who received a sermon about God the people who know hallelujah so there are a number of forces and requirements given to the believer to help and aid our maturity in fact spiritual maturity in the kingdom you may want to write is not a mystery 
spiritual maturity in the kingdom is not a mystery it is predicated upon your adherence to certain spiritual steps that means there is predictability to spiritual maturity it is not a mystery you can be matured and you can know you are matured spiritually i do not know any adult who is not aside from cases of ill health i don't know any adult who is still at a loss as to whether you are an adult biologically you can't be an adult and not know that's if you are healthy and fine are we together now yes he's only a child that does not know he's a child it is when he becomes an adult you will know he was a child yesterday but an adult will always know that you are an adult so if you are still doubting whether you are matured is proof that you are not the apostle says such as i have it was not a statement of pride it was derived from his knowledge there is something i have and it came by growth in luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the bible speaking about jesus said and jesus increased every time i read that scripture it inspires me you would think because jesus was the word incarnate there should never be a reason for increase and yet jesus the word he still grew he increased in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and with men hallelujah praise the name of the lord so the bible is very clear as to the fact that there is a demand upon us to grow and that there are possibilities that we cannot step into except and unless by growth are we together Many of us here, I presume, are parents. No matter how you love your son or your daughter, you cannot take a child of five, six years, even a child of 10 years under normal circumstance and give them the keys to your car. No matter how they cry and beg, it is love that is responsible for that restraint. Not because you are insecure, you love them too much. Now the child will believe arrogantly that he can drive. But as the parent, you know that it would be wickedness. There are certain givings that are not proof of love. So many of the things we ask God for, our maturity cannot host it. We keep praying and say, Lord, open certain doors. Give me certain things. The restraint is not because God does not want to give. His character as a father is that he's a giver. According to Bible, the proof of fatherhood is not just having children. It's in your benevolence. If you being evil know how to give, how much more shall your heavenly father? So when you call him Abba, you also call him a giver. But that he is giving to you is not just predicated on his ability to give, nor your desire to have, but your growth and your maturity there are certain levels of prosperity anointings graces influence that cannot come to you except and unless by growth moses was already called to be a deliverer but that childish spiritually speaking version of him could not be a deliverer he had to be at the back side of the mountain for 40 years and then from one encounter to another encounter when he had attained a state of maturity god now mandated him and said you go back can i tell you there are many of you who have had visions you have had dreams you have received prophetic words you have seen from scripture that which god intends to do i am telling you that in many cases it may not just be demonic is that you have refused to grow to a state where what god gives you becomes a blessing i hope you know that immaturity can make good things become evil hallelujah so what are the principles that can help us to make maximum spiritual progress even in this prophetic year that God has spoken to you of by his servant number one the first force that is responsible for progress in the kingdom please write it is the ministry of prayer I won't talk much I will just mention them and then a word or two because I hope that we'll have some time to pray and then I speak over our lives the ministry of prayer I can spend all night and all week teaching on prayer because prayer is such a vast dimension as far as our work with God is concerned. 
Jesus had a lot to say about the ministry of prayer we are a praying people I confess as a continent and as a nation but I think the challenge with the African and the Nigerian church as far as prayer is concerned is many dimensions of our prayers are praying amiss because there is a lot of dissipation of energy but very little result that comes from our prayer there is a lot of engagement but there is no intelligence that follows our prayer so we dissipate a lot of spiritual energy and we feel justified that on account of that effort that laborious effort this was what the, the this was the frustration of the apostles when they were disciples there was something about the results of Jesus they saw him pray and they saw the results that backed his prayer life and they had to open up and say teach us to pray there is it was not an issue of prayerlessness it was an issue of praying without result it is it is it is painful to invest in prayer and not get results hallelujah but the ministry of prayer is one that you can never downplay and grow prayer is very important Jesus had a lot to say about prayer for instance Luke 18 and verse 1 the Bible says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray so he mandates that all men pray not preachers not those in trouble not those who think they have been afflicted all men ought to pray first Thessalonians 5 and verse 17 the Bible says to pray without ceasing that means to be consistent in your prayer life just giving you a few scriptures hallelujah the Bible says in Mark chapter 11, when you read verse 24, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when, not if, when ye pray. When ye pray. It is true that prayer is not the only key of the kingdom, but prayer must be involved in every process in the kingdom. Please listen to what I just said. Prayer is not, cannot be the only key of the kingdom. But prayer must be involved in every process of the kingdom. The Bible here connects desire to prayer. Whatsoever things, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. In James chapter 5 and verse 13, Apostle James was mentoring us again in the school of prayer. And he said, if, is any man afflicted? He says, let him pray. Then it says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much. Are we learning now? You are not growing spiritually for sure if there is a decline in your prayer life. I assure you on this. If you downplay prayer and prayer becomes a necessary burden that you just have to go through, you are not going to grow spiritually. There is a role that prayer has to play in the growth and the maturity of the saints. Let me just run through four of them very quickly, still on point one. The first assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is for growth and transformation. You may want to write it down. The first assignment of prayer in your life is for your growth and transformation. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. Luke 9, 29. The Bible says, And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. Prayer transforms you. What does that mean? When you engage yourself and submit yourself to the ministry of prayer, backed up by the Spirit, it is able to begin to open your organs of interaction with the realm of the Spirit. The absence of discernment, spiritual carelessness is a product of prayerlessness. So many things happen, but you have not sustained the faculty to perceive, to discern. Hallelujah. In fact, the Bible gives that one of the recommendations for getting out of temptations is to watch and pray watch means your intellect and your mind will be involved but in addition to that he says pray do not depend on your mind and your intellect alone watch and pray if you watch alone you will fall into temptation if you pray alone you might fall into temptation watch and pray is God speaking to us? 
So the first assignment of prayer is for your growth and transformation. The second assignment of prayer very quickly is for what I call spiritual legislation. The ability to make decrees and to manifest possibilities in your life. If you are not rich in your prayer life, there are many things that will not be captured in your experience. Because many of those things will come through the power of decrees and creation. If we are together, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Most people do not know. In fact, Job 22 and verse 28 says, it says that thou shalt decree a thing. Job 22 and 28. 22, 28. 2, 2, 2, 8. Hallelujah. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established. What will be established is not what you want. It's what you decree. And you decree in prayer. Are we together? That in the name of Jesus, the Lord is my light and my salvation. That when men say there is a casting down for me, I decree and declare that there will be a lifting up. Is that someone's testimony? So this is the year when you don't keep quiet. When you hear that something is killing people, a year is not the response. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that I am covered. The Bible says they that dwell in the house of the Lord, that they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Is that true? That even in old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. The assignment of prayer is to give you the responsibility of working in partnership with the Spirit to design and create your possibilities. Do not complain about a day that you did not speak into. Listen, listen. Don't assume you understood what I just said. Do not complain. You have a responsibility. The Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Is that true? He makes the day, but you now fill that day with the possibilities that you want and that happens through prayer. He said, has thou commanded thy morning? Many people are careless. They stumble into days. They stumble into seasons and they wonder why negative things are there. When you fail to sow a seed in your farm, something will still grow. It is called weed agriculture defines weeds as unwanted plants they are plants but they are not wanted at least not in the farm and i will not be silent i will long as long as I am breathing, I will worship you. Prayer gives you the responsibility to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit. January you are blessed. February you are blessed. I call you by your name. I'm speaking about myself. Don't say amen for me. March, I declare you are blessed. April, May, June, July. In the name of Jesus, all that I see in my life is the glory of God. I reject everything that does not carry the image of God in my life. Listen, let me tell you the truth. As childlike as this sounds, many people today have fallen sadly even to the grave because they did not know that part of the responsibility of the believer is to use the creative power of God given to you through words and through the medium of prayer in partnership with the Spirit. Did you know in Ezekiel 37, he said, Ezekiel, tell the bones to do this. And the bones did not respond to the voice of the Spirit. The bones had what the Holy Spirit was telling Ezekiel, yet they did not respond until Ezekiel spoke. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. The sound started when the man spoke, not when the Spirit spoke. So God can say it is a great year for you. If you do not speak, that statement remains in the realm of the Spirit. He says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
not just hear so not just wish so let the blessed of the lord say so let the anointed of the lord say so let those who are flourishing by the lord say so those who are ashamed to say so are those who will be in trouble the woman said to herself if i may but touch i can't heal myself but i can speak i may have an issue of blood but not an issue of speaking hallelujah the third assignment of prayer is for warfare and intercession this is very powerful i'm not teaching on prayer but i'm just helping you i hope we're still together yes that we're discussing the forces that help us to make spiritual progress and one of them is prayer and i'm now breaking down that prayer has four assignments biblically speaking one of the assignment of prayer is for your group and transformation number two is for spiritual legislation number three is for warfare and intercession let me tell you the truth i hate i wish that i were lying but demons are real look up please wickedness is real the bible tells us without confusion that the whole world lies in wickedness i didn't trouble anybody nobody would trouble me go to heaven for as long as you are on earth the bible tells please look up look up look up i'm not being sarcastic i'm just telling you that the world is that wicked to the point that your progress will become somebody's reason for hatred why are you moving forward why does everything work out for you there were people who bound themselves in the bible with fasting that they would not eat till paul died i don't know what they did because paul lived long after that time whether they broke their fast they forgave themselves but paul did not die immediately but look at that level of wickedness that people will bind themselves and say food go away on that means someone can sit down and say i don't know who owns this company but for as long as i'm alive i will work in partnership with the devil to see that it's only tears that come this is the assignment of prayer that you can redesign and redirect your possibilities and say satan minus me minus your children you decree and declare hallelujah it is true spiritual legislation and then warfare and intercession you can establish spiritual realities in your life no sickness will come and bring me down to the grave no i i have a long life to live serving the purposes of god lord you spoke to me through my pastor that i'm flourishing therefore they say that this thing affects everybody in our family but i make a decree in the name of jesus that there is a superior blood the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things even than the blood of abel and i appropriate that blood over my life and my health i will not be a victim of these demonic patterns let me submit to you hoping and wishing that one day it will magically get out of your life is a joke you will need to pray there are families where people don't rise it is true you've seen everybody you've seen those who went before you tried to rise and they went down don't take for granted these forces are vicious they show no mercy it takes the ability to engage the forces of the spirit especially the forces of the blood to keep the enemy at bay god did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there is a structured demonic organogram paul in his exegesis began to list the cadres. he says for we do not uh, wrestle against flesh and blood is that in your bible but against what principalities powers rulers of darkness and the spiritual wickedness that reside in the heavenlies he now begins to teach you that jesus himself is head over principalities he recognizes their existence you are the only one who has denied it jesus himself recognizes that they are there but that you are being raised up with him above them it is your assignment to now engage and establish that reality please for someone this year god is saying if you keep quiet this year will be like last year it's time to pray and say no more 2023 i engage i decree and declare that in the name of jesus my business must reveal christ my life must reveal christ 
Apostle, don't talk to me about last year. It was a horrible year. Don't worry. Remember you not the former things, nor consider the things of old, but it is your assignment now. Every year will be like the last, except your prayer changes it. Is someone learning? Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.